or anything that's just flying passively through the air, uh, the only acceleration in this class that we're going to assume the only acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared straight down. So the way I do it, I would break it up into x and y, look only at the x position, x velocity, x acceleration is zero, uh, and then look at the y, look only at the y position, y velocity, y acceleration, uh, which is due to gravity. Uh, both of these, you can use constant acceleration equations. Uh, you can use any of the three constant acceleration equations, but this third one is really the only one that is helpful right now for, for most cases. All right, so let's look at this one. I know y'all have y'all stretched, right? Y'all previewed this one. So you know uh, how to do this one, right? So if it's going at 10 meters per second at a 40 degree angle, uh, then let's look only in the X direction. Uh, and so where does it start and where does it end? You can set your own starting point. I mean, you can set your own zero point. Uh, so you just decide what are you going to call zero. Uh, and you can set your own axes, but stay consistent. All right, stay consistent. Uh, so I'm going to choose the, my usual X and Y. Uh, and I think I'm going to say it starts at zero. It ends at R, right? Starts at zero, it ends at R. So R right there equals zero. The initial velocity, remember, we're only looking in the X direction. So that'd be 10 cosine 40 and then zero. I like to do as much of the math as I can, uh, 7.66T, but then I get to a point most of the time where I've, I've got two unknowns and just one equation. So now I'm going to hop to the uh, next equation. Now, I said you can choose your axes, but I said you can choose your axes. All right. But I would not choose, I would not rotate your axes. Why? Because of acceleration. All right. I would not rotate my axes because if you rotate your axes, then that acceleration due to gravity a component's going to be in X, a component's going to be in Y. Maybe you could handle that, you know, 9.81, you know, cosine something in the X, 9.81, or you might be sine something in the X. So anyway, um, I would stick with our, our usual horizontal and vertical axes. But you can choose positive or negative, just stay consistent. I'm choosing up to be positive Y. So let, let, I'll be consistent, and for all of the, my position, velocity, acceleration, up is positive. All right, what position does it start? What position does it end? Do, well, do I want to call this my zero height way down there? Maybe it ends at zero. Um, or do I want to call this my zero height? You can do either. Just be consistent and be careful. I think I'm going to say down here, this is zero, so it ends at zero. All right, it ends at zero. Final position is zero. My initial, initial position is above zero. It's up. Uh, this height, do we know that height? Not exactly, but do you see this right here? If this is a three, four, five triangle and my base is R, H over R is three over four. Uh, multiply so h is three fourths r. Now don't memorize that. And every every problem is different. I gave a problem on a test where the r was the hypotenuse. The r was the actual length on the incline, and had a lot of people trying to tell me something like this. Just you know, every situation is different. Don't memorize these problems. Uh, but anyway, ask yourself: Do I know the r? What is that r? That r is three. Or it's a height. Do I know the height? What is that height? In this case, that height is three fourths r. Three fourths r. Uh, the v initial is 10 sine 40 t. Uh, don't forget this t right here. That's a very common mistake. It's, it's v i t, right? Uh, so, anyway, sine 40, and the t's outside of the sine. Sine 40 times t. Is this positive 10 sine 40? Yeah, because it's, it launched upward. I gave a problem um, on a test where something started launching downward and you'd need to put a negative if, you know, if, if you're using my axes. 
I'd put a negative if it's launched downward. This one's launched upward, so that's plus. Uh, all right, and then now here, negative 9.81 t squared. Negative 9.81 t squared. That equation, sometimes that equation only has one unknown. Maybe t is the only unknown. Uh, then you can solve for t, but that has two unknowns. But I have two equations with two unknowns. I could substitute that right in there for r, and then I could solve for t. And don't overcomplicate some of these. Do you see that when we plug in this, I'm not going to do this math, but we, when we plug in this, we're going to have a t right here, a t right here, a t squared right here. How would you solve that? You could factor out a t, and so t is equal to zero is one solution, but that, that doesn't make sense. Um, and then you could solve um, without having to use quadratic uh, formula. So don't use quadratic formula. If there, are, if there are t's everywhere, you can factor one out. But if it's a constant and a t and a t squared, that's when you need to use quadratic formula. All right, so here I would get... 2.48 seconds, plug that back in here, I'll get our 19.0 meters, box that in. All right, not too bad. Let's don't memorize, let's step, take a step back and look at what we did. We saw it was a projectile, we broke it up into x and y, uh, we use that third constant acceleration equation, the acceleration in x is zero, the acceleration in y is down, 9.81 meters per second squared. We were careful about our axes. We were careful about positives and negatives. Okay, now, this question doesn't ask, this problem doesn't ask this, but what about the speed just before it hits the ground? It's very common for me to I don't know, throw that in there. Let's calculate the speed just before it hits the ground. After it hits the ground, um, it's no longer a projectile. These equations are not true. We'd have to think about that collision. Uh, but just before it hits the ground, it's, so we can still think about that as a projectile. So I would separate x from y. And I would try to find the velocity in x and the velocity in y. Don't forget about both of them. And then a squared plus b squared, take the square root to find the magnitude, the speed. All right, <clears throat> which equation should I use? Well, this equation does not have final velocity in it. So we would need to use one of the other equations. So VF equals VI plus AT. Maybe that one would be a good, good one to use. So, but don't forget to do both uh, components to find the speed. Now, acceleration is zero. That was kind of a dumb uh, equation for me to write. But does, do, do you see, and does it make sense? We are assuming without air resistance in this class, our x velocity does not change. Our x velocity is not, does not change. So v final in the x is still 10 cosine 40. v final in the x is 7.66 meters per second. All right, but the y, we really will need to calculate this one. It started with t sine 40 positive uh, my acceleration is negative and now 2.48 try to put an eight my, it's not letting me uh all right 2.48 right there and i would get final velocity negative 17.9 and that makes sense right it has a negative y velocity uh and then a squared plus b squared 7.66 squared 17.9 squared, take the square root to find the speed, 19.47 meters per second would be speed. Uh, speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So sometimes I'll put V with absolute value to just to show the magnitude. All right, so that might be an occasion where you might use a, that third, or maybe that's the, sorry, that's the second constant acceleration equation uh, that's on our sheet. You know, you probably would have gotten the same answer if we had used that other one, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Uh, we still should have gotten 17.9. All right. So that might be a, a way to double check our answer. All right. That's a good one.